Hey, good morning. I'm nobody. Who are you? <laughs> this is not Amherst, Massachusetts, but I like to think that it looks like this. Hey, good morning. Oh, <laughs> rolled my ankle there. <laughs> to not stop this morning, huh? Hey, good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. I don't know nothing. I'm just a dude on a bicycle. Having the lovely opportunity to discuss with you how I'm working to evolve as a filmmaker, as a poet, writer, and as a human being. Thank you so much for joining me on the ride. I really appreciate it on this Monday morning. By the way, Cupertino thinks it's 42 degrees in Boise based on the data that they're collecting or presenting. I don't know where the breakdown is, but it's colder than 42. <laughs> but it is a gorgeous morning here. One of the things I have learned is when it is really cold out and I'm on the bike to get warmed up, I'll put it in kind of a lower gear Hey, good morning on your left here. I like to put it in kind of a lower gear, like a more spinny gear where you're, I'm pedaling faster but not going far. That gets the blood flowing, gets me warmed up. Now, of course, if you've got much resistance there at all, it's also fairly aerobic and then you start sweating, and then you get wet under your jacket. Ah, oh, what a mess. Then you get hypothermia. Somebody calls 911. Someone steals the wheel off your bike while the emergency crew is taking you away. It can be deadly, folks. So, figure out that you're going to stay warm on a bike. But I do find that doing a little bit of uh, just spinning early on, especially, you know, I'm coming up on uh, 49 years here helps loosen up the uh, <laughs> knock the dirt out of the joints in the morning <laughs> so how you doing this morning how was your ride how was your weekend we had a pretty good weekend I've been feeling weird I think I'm on the edge of being sick or something this is the change in the weather not so sick but uh, allergies different allergies getting at me a little bit that's all right all part of it isn't it oh look at that that was gorgeous I am trying to figure out how to get that I love having that shot that first shot introduction shot for the video version of the podcast as it gets cold I don't like taking my gloves off so we'll see how that goes ah look Imports. <laughs> Canada geese. Yeah, bad joke, I know. Hey, good morning. Good grief, it is just gorgeous out. So, thinking about art and identity, meaning how who I am impacts my creative projects, my artistic projects the way that I express myself. It reminded me of this short poem by Emily Dickinson. She didn't title her poems. I think this one's number 206 or something. That is the 206th one that they collected in a particular volume. It's arbitrary basically is what I'm saying. You'll probably recognize the first line here. So this is uh, Emily Dickinson here. I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell. They'd advertise, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public, like a frog that tells, one, that tells one's name the live long June 
to an admiring bog. <laughs> Boy, that's a twisty little thing to get you noggin' around, isn't it? I'm going to leave some notes to a couple of things that I found about it. I was reading over the weekend uh, about this poem. I'll leave some notes to that for you. If you want to understand it more fully and also to read it. One thing that I love about Emily Dickinson is that seeing her poems on the page actually makes a difference for me. Because of her punctuation, it's difficult to read. Hey, good morning on your left. Her punctuation makes a difference in the way that I read it, but it probably means that you would read it differently. Oh, segue. <laughs> so we watched Garden State this weekend on Friday night, Jennifer and I. Speaking of, you know what yesterday was, don't you? October 6, 1998. I was the box office manager at the Napa Valley Symphony, minding my own business, doing my job to the best of my abilities. Ah, we got some noise here, folks. Actually, that job I did pretty well. I had a great coach in Tom, executive director, good friend. Right. And across the room, across the lobby, here comes this woman pushing one of the veterans in a wheelchair. The symphony performed at a veteran's home in Northern California. I saw that little lady and I just kind of fell in love pretty much immediately. Just right before two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. You never know what's gonna happen, folks. You never know. Which is why you should always carry spare parts with you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jennifer, for, well, we haven't been together 21 years. Oh, yeah, that was 98, man. Small wall ride. I got one pannier with a lot of stuff, which makes the bike very unweighted, meaning if the front wheel comes off the ground, it's gonna twist. And I fall down. <laughs> All right, Identity. We watch Garden State. It's a film from 2000, it was made in 2003, came out in 2004. It was written and directed by Zach Braff, Peter Sarsgaard, uh, Natalie Portman, a bunch of other people that were kind of emergent at the time, meaning they weren't like maybe A-list people yet, but they were definitely emerging talent. Actually, the acting in the whole film is amazing. Now, one of the things that I've been reading recently is the difference between an actor's director and a film director. Like Christopher Nolan is more of a film director, more of a camera guy, camera director, visual director. Michael Bay, obviously a visual director. I'm not suggesting you watch any of his films, by the way. It's not discouragement, they're just not for everyone. Autobots and stuff. But like Zach Braff, Ron Howard is definitely an actor's director, meaning he came up through acting rather than through cinematography or through filmmaking. And so he knows what an actor needs or wants, hopefully, <laughs> in order to get a great performance. So when you watch his films, you see great performances, but not like a lot of fancy camera work. And that got me thinking about the very little acting experience that I have. I mean, compared to people that are really good. But I've done some musicals, some opera, been in a few plays. It's not my thing. I don't particularly enjoy it. I like being part of a big process, but being out on stage in front of people is not my thing. I'd rather hide behind the <laughs> abstraction of a podcast. See, so that's how my mind works. Which is what I also got to thinking this weekend is 
what kind of a director am I? Zach Braff, clearly a, an actor's director, but he also like did some great stuff, not necessarily with the camera, but with the editing, I guess. Some dream kind of sequences. He does this a lot in his, uh, oh gosh, what's the name of it? We've only seen it once, but it's really good. Anyway, his other one, wish, wish you were here, wish I was here, wish we were here. But it's a really good one too. I enjoyed that one a lot. Enjoyed Garden State a lot more. It's got enough quirk and a lot of, and enough narrative and enough like meaning. And this is the point of what I learned this weekend, which was really exciting for me, is I've been trying to get away with as little dialogue as possible, which if I was a more visual kind of artist, I guess, that would make sense. Because like I've got these visual ideas that are, you know, creating patterns and contrasts and repetitions of some sort. But I don't know that I'm that person. But I'm also, also not really an actor's director. I mean, I've never done real directing. I've done it a couple of times for some work projects. And I uh, got to work with some, some folks from the acting department, students who are theater majors at Boise State on a couple of projects. And that was like, that was really cool. I was like, oh my God, you actually can act. You know, usually in the marketing PR kind of stuff that we do, you gotta use the person that's doing the thing, you know? The lady that makes the purple balls, you gotta go talk to her if the video's about the purple balls and she may or may not have like a great hey good morning on your left <coughs> Jesus so the point is with the marketing kind of videos you kind of get what you get whereas with when you're working with actors you can say yeah we need an actor that does this kind of thing so one of the quotes that I've heard recently a lot is the best directors know how to cast. In other words, how to find the right people to act in their films. And that's true. You want people that, that you can get along with, that you can work with, that can inspire you, that can push you, that have a different perspective than you. That's what I'm hoping for. I learned that big time with uh, when we hired a journalist up at UAA to come and do some PR, some like a man on the street kind of videos around campus at UAA. And I was like, I didn't have a clue where she was coming from ever. And so at first that was very disturbing. And then I realized this is freaking awesome. There's only two of us in this department and now we have two perspectives. <laughs> so that was pretty exciting to then be able to say, yeah, we need your perspective, especially on this project or throughout a project. Like, hey, what do you think about this? Are we building this narrative correctly? She really taught me everything about narrative. So, Kathleen, if you're out there listening, thank you ever so much. The point is, <clears throat> excuse me, the point is I, I heard some great dialogue in Garden State and realized how precise language is, which is exactly what I love about poetry, is its precision <laughs> in subjectivity, obviously. And how how that words, you might have to use a lot of them, can convey really precise meaning, whereas an image has to be made by a master in order for it to convey a lot of particular meaning. It can convey concepts easily enough. And then I realized that just may be the limit of my visual intelligence, right? I mean, like, maybe, like, paintings and photos don't 
necessarily convey specific meaning to me, but maybe they do to other people. And that's why I hope to find a cinematographer for my film projects who understands that differently from me. So, Zach Braff, thank you, sir, for your example and garden state of how words can, how great dialogue performed well can really convey meaning and not get in the way. I think too often movies these days are shot like plays and you just keep putting people in beautiful situations and taking forever to light them and, and it doesn't really add to what I call cinema. And I really want this first one to be cinematic. I'm, I'm going for that because I don't understand it. So I figure if I go for it and fail, at least it'll be a beautiful mess. That's what I'm hoping for beautiful messes. Speaking of beautiful messes, actually, no, not speaking of beautiful messes at all. Jennifer made me an apple pie last night that I am so excited to get home to tonight. Yeah, to her, obviously, but no, to the apple pie too, man. Made with our apples off of our tree. We've been eating them in oatmeal all weekend. It's so good. We just harvested this week. And got a lot of really good ones. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see way too many photos of them. I found a handful more this weekend. <laughs> more apples coming your way. Oh, I didn't download them to my phone. Oh, well. We will, hey, good morning. We will figure that out tomorrow. <laughs> so I was really grateful for this weekend. I learned a lot, a lot of breakthroughs, mental breakthroughs on my approach to writing a film mainly, which is really helpful for me in the, and uh, how we're gonna put it together later. So I was grateful to have those art experiences. I'm grateful that it's cool again, that it's fall. I love that. I've been reading a lot of poetry again, which of course is surfacing here. So if you like that, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know. You can find us on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Morning Ride Pod. <laughs> I know it's horrible. Find the website, morningridepodcast.com. By the way, we've got on your left sweatshirts out there now that are super warm and cozy. Really love them. They're beefy design. I really love these sweatshirts. And they're the same ones that we use for all of our bicycle works, but these are on your left. Check those out on the website too. Folks, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. Whatever your bicycle is, man. My bicycle is a bicycle. It's filmmaking, it's art. I'm grateful to be a part of that ride. I'd love to hear about your ride. Get in touch with me. Hope that you have an opportunity to be on your ride today. It's the only one we get. <laughs> you wanna be a nobody too? Wanna to be a nobody like me? Let's do it. Let's get this ride together. Thanks for being here this morning. I will see you on Thursday.